I'm Pastor James, and if you know me, you know we're going to talk about Lego this morning. (laughs) We've all got our favorite Christmas present, our favorite Christmas gift. Ralphie had the Red Ryder BB gun, right? The kid from 8-Bit Christmas had the Nintendo Entertainment System, and Arnold Schwarzenegger's kid really wanted that Turbo Man doll. For me, it was the Lego King's Castle. All of 1987 was spent me begging my parents for that Lego set. I hadn't even had any Legos yet. I wanted my first Lego set to be that one. And Christmas morning, 1987, I opened my first present, and it was the Lego King's Castle. It started a passion that has yet to subside. It was one of the greatest gifts my parents ever gave me. I remember vividly building the turrets and towers and gatehouse with my father on Christmas morning. It ignited a passion that if you walk into my office or home, you can see has only gotten stronger with time. Building Lego brings so much peace and joy into my life. And Lego seems to know this, that there's a lot of guys out there my age who really love Lego. And they launched a new set this year, and it's an update of the Lego King's Castle. Except it's $400, (laughs) 4,500 pieces, and they launched a commercial with it with a middle-aged man pretending to play in the Middle Ages, and it flashes pictures of him as a child playing with the set, and then his daughter sneaks into the room and starts playing with him, and I start to cry. Because my favorite thing to do is to pass on my passions to my children through gifts. And I've done this with Legos. I I look for every opportunity to gift them Legos, not just so I get to play with them, but so we can play with them together and they can experience the fun and fellowship and peace of building together. However, the greatest gift my parents gave me was not a Lego castle. The greatest gift I give my kids is not toys at all. It is the gift of peace with God, the gift that we celebrate in here every week. My parents made a point of looking for every opportunity to share that gift with me. They were passionate about Christ, and it was evident during the holidays in the way they passed on the gift of faith to me and my siblings. Simply put, my parents used the holidays as a way to make disciples, as a way to pass on the passion they had for the gospel, the forgiveness of sins, the fact that we are right with God. We prayed, sang, partied, and feasted together at church and at home while gathering around the gospel, the good news. And now, it's my turn to be the gift giver, and I look for every chance I can find to gift my kids with true peace. The peace that only comes from one place, from Christ. In his gospel, John records that Jesus said, I've told you this so that my peace will be with you. In the world, you will have trouble. But cheer up, I have overcome the world. We live in a world full of trouble, hostility, war, and at times very little peace. In a weird way, It's during the holidays that we sometimes notice the most trouble in the world. During a season of giving, we see the needs of others more clearly. After you fill your baskets to the brim with gifts for your family and friends, take a look around as you drive home from the mall. You'll see people who are hurting, hungry, in disagreements, cold and lonely. As families gather for the holidays, empty seats at the the table feel even more empty. There's a lack of peace, of completeness in the world that can be amplified at times during the holidays. But Christ, the Prince of Peace, said, in the world you will have trouble, but cheer up, I have overcome the world. Despite the brokenness and lack of peace in the world, we have a Savior who has made our relationship with our Father right. And he is working this rightness, this completeness, this peace in and through us this Christmas season and throughout the year. This 
is a gift. And it's one that never runs out. And it's one that never goes on sale because it's always free. Almost 3,000 years ago, during a time when God's people were suffering, when their nation was being invaded and they were taken captive, the prophet Isaiah proclaimed a message of hope and peace to them. A child will be born for us. A son will be given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Hundreds of years before Christ was born, God's people, Old Testament Christians, were waiting for Christ. During a time of war and captivity, they were waiting for the gift of peace from the Prince of Peace, King of Peace. They were hoping for Christmas morning, and we reenact this waiting every year in the church during Advent season. Because we are still Advent people. We are just like the Israelites who were waiting for Christ. They were waiting for Christmas Day. We too are waiting for Christmas. Christmas the sequel. Except unlike most sequels, this one's actually better. We have a lot to celebrate and to pass on to others. Christ has already brought us peace with God through his works, his life, his death, his resurrection. And now we are waiting for him to return and fully enact the victory he has already won. We are waiting for his advent again. We are waiting for second Christmas. You may know about first Christmas, but what about second Christmas? Isaiah has something to say about second Christmas using some rather figurative language that seems kind of weird. Wolves will live with lambs. Leopards will lie down with goats. Calves, young lions, and year-old lambs will be together, and little children will lead them. Cows and bears will eat together. Their young will lie down together. Lions will eat straw like oxen. And infants will play near cobra's holes. Toddlers will put their hands into viper's nests. They will not hurt or destroy anyone anywhere on my holy mountain. The Lord will be filled, the world will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, like water covering the sea. This is kind of some confusing stuff, so what better to illustrate it than Lego? We have a new tradition in my family. It's been building over the years. Building over the years. It started 35 years ago when I got my first Lego set, but it culminates right now with my Lego Christmas Village. I truly, truly enjoy every year putting together the Lego village, playing with it with my kids, and then telling them to stop touching it because I have to. <laughs> I have to put every character in their right place and build the perfect little Lego village. I know it's cheesy, it's kind of like a Hallmark movie, but I want to live in that perfect little Christmas village year round. A world with no war, no pain, no suffering, peace, comfort, and joy all year round. If you're like me, you're yearning for this same world. I'm thinking of adding some new things to my Christmas village, maybe some like bears and, and lions having tea together and, you know, babies snake handling or something like that. <laughs> but Isaiah was onto something we have the promise of a world where there is no more strife, where even the animals will get along, where there's no death, no sorrow, no suffering. We have the promise of this, and that is the promise of Christmas, that one day when Christ returns, all will live in a perfect Christmas world of peace for eternity with our Prince of Peace. I've been waiting for that moment all my life, O oh Lord. This Advent season, as we remember the Advent and birth of our Savior, rest in the next Advent when he will return and fully usher in an eternity of peace. Be Advent people who are filled with comfort, joy, and peace and who share it with others. 
Paul had an understanding of this and he wrote this to the Romans. May God, the source of hope, fill you with joy and peace through your faith in him. Then you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. As you wait for second Christmas, find every opportunity to celebrate the peace that Christ has given us. Peace with our creator and a future peace with all of creation. As you're wrapping the latest must-have toys for your children, remember that the greatest gift you can give others is a gift that you already have been given. Peace from Christ. Give this gift of peace to all your friends and families. It's a gift that will build over time and create a passion that overflows with hope. Amen? Please join me in prayer. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. We thank you for the peace that you have gifted to us. Peace earned through your works, your death, and your resurrection. As we remember the first Christmas, help us to look forward to the second Christmas. Help us to rest in the good news that when you return, you will usher in a world full of perfect peace, perfect comfort, perfect joy, and completeness. Work that peace, comfort, and joy in and through us this Advent and throughout the year. Help us to share your gift of salvation with others as we celebrate that same gift this Christmas. In the name of the Prince of Peace, our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, amen.